Hello everyone, welcome to the weekly Jenkins SIG infrastructure team meeting. Today we are 28th of May 2024. Around the virtual table, we have myself, Tamir Duportal, Hervé Lemeur. So I believe Hervé, you are on the bus. Or uh, So Hervé is not opening the camera, but is there. Thanks for joining. Mark is off. Stéphane Merle is there, Bruno Verharten, Kevin Martins, and Jay Reddy. I think that's all, 6-6. Six, six. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's get started with the announcements. So we have a week, weekly release, which uh, changelog has been pushed. So the weekly version is 2.460. Thanks, Kevin, for uh, the async message. That helps a lot. Uh, release, the war has been released with success. Packages is OK. Stuck at mirror sync, but done. Um, Docker image to do. Since Mark is in holidays, I believe uh, he's not taken care yet. So usually I'm the fallback. So I'm gonna, at the end of this meeting, create the tag and build the image. To do later today. Is there anything else on the weekly release? Nope, okay. Um, second, announcements. I forgot to mention that topic uh, during the recording last week, but we discussed that after of records. So there is um, a poll in order to try to see if we can find another day or time for this meeting. Uh, one of the main reason is with uh, Jay, our new team member arriving, we start to cover more time zones, but also because that's something we haven't done since two years and we should to open uh, to more people. So we have different solutions because the challenge here is that uh, Kevin and Mark are on the US and most of the contributors are. On the other side of the earth, we have uh, our Indian and any Asian contributor who might want to, to join. Uh, Jay, you're not the first on this area. We had a, a Chinese, Indian and Australian contributor who wanted to join at different moment on time. And the others are in Europe. So right now we are the lucky one for once. But that means we need to try to find a new way for this meeting. Um, let me add the link to the poll. So many thanks um, for the one who already answered. Weekly meeting schedule. So the goal of the poll is just a few timeline that looked like it were okay for everyone. So you can select. There is an other selection if you have another idea and a pattern that we haven't proposed but i've written in the poll will be to change one week to the other so we cover one one part of the globe on uh, even weeks and the other part of the globe on odds weeks that's also something we could have um, so i let you take the time my proposal is to get started on the current poll result for that we have right now, and then we can try alternating if you, it looks like a good idea. Right now we have a winner. Everyone is okay for Tuesday. That will be uh, at noon UTC. So that will be 2 p.m. Paris time. Um, Kevin, which hour will it be for you? Uh, I think that's at 8 a.m. on Tuesdays. So works perfectly. Yeah, sure, because yes. I'm not an, a morning person, so 8 a.m. for starting to work <laughs> for a meeting is hard for me mentally. I mean, it no, can be um, there, but not really. My cats wake up me up at like 6 a.m. usually, so oh, I'll be more okay. than awake at that time. Okay, so cats-driven meeting, perfect. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I propose we get started with the poll results. Oh no, we are missing uh, Hervé. Uh, Hervé, do, do you think it's okay given your timelines and workloads? If we try earlier uh, at 2 p.m. our time? Yes, uh, looks fine to me. 
Okay, thanks. So we'll try uh, at uh, noon UTC next week. I will uh, ask uh, for rescheduling the team meeting. And then we'll see if we need to alternate between two different areas, if need be. The message here is if you feel like the date or time is not good for you, then please ask us to reschedule. Bruno, uh, I also see you haven't answered or haven't seen. Is that is 2 p.m. your time OK for you? Mm, on Tuesday? Yes. yes, I'm currently trying to answer. Uh... <laughs> no problem. OK. No, sorry. Uh, okay, so let, let me. Oh, okay. Let's try two hour earlier than today for the upcoming weeks. Don't hesitate to raise your voice for other options such as alternating, alternating to different times to cover the whole globe. OK, is there any question, remark, feedback, objections on that topic? OK, so let's try next week. Uh, about the calendar, next weekly, 2.461. Uh, will happen next week, so that will be Tuesday will be the 4th of June. I don't know when the next LTS is, to be quite honest. Let me check the calendar on my other screen. Let's the release see. is going to be June 12th, Damon. Cool. And the release candidates um, expected to be available this week. OK. So Stefan, you were right. There is something around the LTS this week. The yeah, but just the release candidate, so. Um, 12, sorry. Did I wrote 9? Oh, my. <laughs> um, do you know the version number, just in case? Uh, it's going to be 2.452.2. Two. 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 Oh, oh, oh. two. Cool. Uh, final. OK, perfect. Thanks, folks. Uh, Jenkins Security Advisories. Uh, we had one last week. Uh, it was just a publication on plugins that were already released. These are low usage plugins, but worth to mention. Uh, and no other security advisory plan for now. Uh, new security, done. So I'm adding the last week uh, advisory on the announcement. I forgot about this one. Minor security advisory last Friday. OK, I'm jumping voluntarily the next major event. We'll fill it next week. Is there something on the announcement or upcoming calendars? OK, I understand, Hervé, you might have limited availability for the upcoming milestones. You've lost, yes. Hervé. OK, so let's just be careful on the usual uh, planning. But we already had worked on this before the meeting, so that should be easy. So let's let's do one week after the other. Let's focus on the upcoming week. Anything else on the announcement calendar, folks? Nope. OK. Let's have a look at the cloud budget consumption for uh, the current month and the forecast. So on Azure, we should finish the month at 4.3. That will be 4.2 and something, and the $100 that we are built for the support. So we are on the green window. That could be better, but we didn't spend time on optimization, so that's that's fine. That means we should be able to be below the expected uh, billing yearly. Right now we have we haven't we have almost 
gotten to the, the right consumption. The goal is 60K maximum for the whole year. So that will be 5K per month. We consume more in January and February. So that's why we need to be below 5K until the end of the month. The target is being 4.5K per month until the end of the year max. But we don't have margin with 4.5. That's why 4.3 is perfect. And it absolutely is inside our goal. So congrats, everyone, for keeping that uh, consumption uh, in a corral. Uh, what about Azure sponsorship? So the credits that we have been offered by Microsoft, we have 26,000 credit left until end of August. Um, the current consumption, we have more than doubled our consumption, which is expected because we wanted to remove costs out from uh, CloudBees AWS account and DigitalOcean. And now we consume on that account. So that means we have consumed, we should have consumed almost 2K, a bit more, just on CI Jenkins IO container agents, which include BOM release. So that's a proof that we are consuming these credits. Um, and that could be a great case for asking Microsoft for new credits next year. So congrats, folks. Again, that's we are in the expected area. Now, DigitalOcean. Uh, we have 16,000 credits available until the 2nd January 2025. Uh, we are consuming a bit less than last week because, of course, as I said, we've removed the clusters from that account. So right now, DigitalOcean is doing only host of archives Jenkins IO. So we have some margin from services or workloads to add in DigitalOcean soon, if need be. Um, so nothing, we are, uh, again, uh, it's expected a bit less than last month and we should stay uh, on this consumption rate that should even decrease next month with the cluster deletion. Um, now on the AWS sports, same behavior as DigitalOcean, we will spend at least 1K less than the previous months. That's the result of, again, that cluster move. So next week, we should be around 6K, which is a good news. And untouch on the sponsored account. So globally, that's cool. We are uh, in the goals we, are, we wanted. So congratulations, everyone. Let's keep it steady for the upcoming months. Is there any question in the cloud budgets? Yep, OK. Uh, let's, yeah, sorry. Before that, do you want to make a, um, a, I don't know if you say a point, but a check on the um, upcoming um, uh, alert on uh, renewing uh, Good token point. or AP, because we, we said we should do that and we forget all the time. Uh, is that okay or to add it on upcoming calendar? As you wish. Um, up the, absolutely good point. Upcoming credential experiences, expirations. Okay, I have my calendar on the other screen. I'm looking at the Jenkins Infra team. So until Sunday, we don't have anything. First week, oh, the eighth. Okay, as your credential for trusted CI, 8th June. As your credential, trusted.ci. Um, then we will have digital ocean personal access token. And that's all for the upcoming three weeks. So that means we need to create issues for this one. Stefan, you create one and I will create one. Which one Perfect. do you take? Uh, first one. 
Um, creates the issue and it should have taken the second one, but that's okay. You as splitting splitting the, the burden is always good. Good. Good reminder, and I will need to update the template for the notes. And so we'll keep this uh, every week then. Any questions? Okay, switching to the work we were able to finish during the past iteration. We had five closed issues, three as work done and two as uh, no work, uh, no task expected. Uh, we had blocked by, so let me take them one by one. Uh, first one, Packer image bug within update CLI to update GUS since exclusion of Windows 2019 for VS, VS Studio. Stefan, can you give us a summary on this one, please? Uh, yes, this one was a, a, a small uh, rabbit hole. Um, we had a problem with the YAML from that uh, GUS for Windows uh, because we had a templating to exclude uh, Windows 2019 uh, in the test of GOS for the installation of uh, Visual Studio. That templating was not seen as correct YAML by the engine of uh, Update CLI. Uh, so we had to update all the manifests for Update CLI that were looking at that file to use another engine for YAML. And uh, and doing that, we uh, we discover that uh, um, the delimiter were not correct within the test of the ghost file for Visual Studio Code, and that we didn't have the the uh, environment variable sent correctly for uh, ghost for Windows. So all of that had to be. Um, to be uh, sold, and I also discovered that uh, GOS way of managing the the inline PowerShell backup provider uh, was mistakenly uh, or by error sending um, a correct error code even when uh, yeah the fail fast even when one of the step within that. Uh, inline script was failing, so so it was saying okay, and and no, it was not. So I had to split those uh, script, for, uh, each one in in his own provider to get the correct error code. So that that was a, that was a funny one. This one, absolutely, but good work because now we know if there is an issue on the window. Uh, test harness, so <laughs> that's useful, right? Yeah, that that's always <laughs> useful. Uh, that there was a, like a domino effect. Uh, absolutely, but good. Um, we have also a user complaining that they were blocked when trying to download plugins. They were blocked by uh, whatever, and they weren't able to download plugin from the Aachen Mirror while they were able from the Belgium one, which are close. They are 12 by car, so we are really close. Um, looks like they directly ping the Aachen Mirror maintainer, C Auto, and they were blocked. So C Auto, thanks again for the work you did here. Uh, and they unblocked the user. Um, we had the second same kind of issue. So that time it has been closed as no action because they they already had help to hey, I need to contact this person or this person. Um, in one of the two issues, I don't remember which one, the user was based in Russia. So the new Romanian mirror might help them in the future because one of the reasons why our university blocks is because a lot of bots are eating them and DDoSing them. So that's why they have these kind of blockers. Sometimes they block for valid reasons and sometimes it's, yeah, it's no chance, but yeah, they have to protect themselves. So again, thanks uh, for everyone involved in the Aachen University for sponsoring us. And thanks for being able to help the users so quickly. That's really cool. Um, finally, the last one is the big issue. We don't have any more clusters, Kubernetes cluster on AWS, neither on DigitalOcean. Four cluster removed, 
every configuration secrets we were able to find. So CI gates, EKS public docs and docs public does not exist anymore. If you still see references to this cluster, please clean them up. Uh, the last element were cleaned up since last week. And as we saw, and I've added also um, uh, graphical, we see a clear decrease at least on AWS. So that's going the right direction and we were able to close it. Next step now is the update center. Only cleanup was left, done. We see the decrease on AWS and the bills while consuming in Azure sponsor sponsored account. Any question on the tasks done? Okay, so let's start now with the the whole work in progress stuff. Um, let me finish updating. So the first topic is update center, that the most prior topic. Um, what is the status of this one? Uh, Andover from Hervé to Stefan, given the limited availabilities for the upcoming milestones and given the criticity of that topic that, invo that should involve the whole team, now Stefan and I are pairing and taking that issue as the first top level topic. Um, done. So thanks again, Hervé, for the huge work you did on this one and for the help even you are continue doing here. Uh, that's really a team effort and really everyone can be proud and we are almost there. Uh, what were we able to achieve? Uh, we have designed um, the next step around architecture for production. So, uh, Stefan, can you explain a bit your proposal from last week that you digged? You have uh, you you have you made two proposals during the past weeks, one about the new VM and one about uh, the second Cloudflare. Can you just explain one and the other, mm. so, uh, just a summary? The the okay the the architecture is is done by um um, um sorry doing um, a little as we are we are having a mirror bit uh, uh, spread of loading and and closer to the clients. That's the work of uh, of Hervé, and and it's Hervé who uh, proposed to have two buckets from Cloudflare uh, to use as um, mirrors, and he did already one, and I'm working right now to add another one, but on the other side, uh, geographically distant, we have one in West Europe already, and I'm I'm doing the the next one in the US East, which is closer of the, the VM you're, we are using right now as the source. And uh, that means uh, less latency. So that's uh, a second mirror, but uh, as I feel uncomfortable having both mirrors uh, using the same uh, provider, Cloudflare, even if we can trust them, I'd like to uh, um, add another um, Mirror uh, using VMs that we're not uh, using anymore at Azure SL. So, yeah, or, or as a fallback, exactly. Uh, so I checked on those VM. Um, they're not exactly the same. One is more powerful than the other one. They both have um, multiple gigabyte uh, free of hard drive, and we we will. We are using less than one gigabyte right now, so uh, so we can pick any one of them to uh, to be our third mirror in the that mirror bit uh, um, architecture. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned in case of terrible problem, we also can spin up a VM in Digital Ocean for fallback alternative. That will be the last resort of the last no, resort. The worst case scenario will be in the 
Mark's attic in his basement. Sorry. <laughs> Fair. He's um, not there. That's 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 not yeah, it. Clearly, his ISP will block him from internet given the amount of outbound <laughs> bandwidth. If you do that at home, I mean, they won't like the 50 terabyte outgoing data <laughs> per month. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so that one is the plan C. So thanks, folks, uh, for this design. So we were able to hand over. We know uh, how things are working. And we have um, uh, credentials for Azure HTTPD new bucket tested with success. So now the work in progress is on update center two. Uh, so I'm taking over if it's okay for you, Stefan. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working on, we expect uh, one, two, three, we expect f four peers, one already in draft. Uh, first pair, uh, new, one that will be a new one, it will be abstract away. Abs abstract, okay, I'm having issue <laughs> with words. Abstract away the environment, bucket URLs, credentials from the publish script to allow real life testing without impacting production. That's the first step. And also because we need to to, to be able to have multiple air sync in parallel and AWS sync and AZ sync. And manage multiple sync targets per kind. G R sync, AZ copy, S3 R2. Um, one pair is for adding the AZ copy HTTPD sync support draft already there. So that was the initial work from Hervé. We found a, a pattern using environment file. So the contract is that we source the environment file. And so that abstract the need to say, we need this variable, this variable. We just add checks, but we don't have to write everything inside the script itself. That's easier for us to test, to abstract and verify. Now we will have uh, um, new R2 buckets to be added. So that's on Stefan. The Cloudflare one. Right? everyone and the first one is for me so the name i'm putting here is the person responsible for leading the charge this one we spend we use that pull request as a support for andover stefan you have the new r2 buckets and later osu osl vms with the earthing sync these are the next step required before we resume the performance. Any question? Okay, so let's roll. Um, <laughs> what did we have? Uh, about the two new Jenkins mirrors. Uh, so for both, was able to... Uh, so le let's go in order. RCS RDS, they still need to add HTTPS on their server and give us credentials for sync. Looks like they are having issues. It's an old server. Pinged them, still waiting. So I'm going to park this one somewhere. Uh, you have serious doubt that they will be able to land this because they look like overloaded. And for the second one, so uh, in the case of Ostico, they gave us FTP credentials. And we never had until today the case of AirSync or FTP uh, that are not anonymous. What were we able to, uh, to do? Done, uh, verified that we can specify user and password 
in the FTP or Earthsync inline URL. The format is, for instance, FTP user password at hostname path. That is supported by mirror bits. The, uh, the code shows it, it, uh, it works with this. Tested it with success on a local mock. Um, whip, waiting for them to re-enable their FTP or Earthing. The problem here is that we didn't answer soon enough to them, so they disabled the FTP server after. So they had the server crash, and they didn't re-enable the FTP. Now they know we need it, and they think Earthing should be OK. They should uh, do that this week. So as soon as we have their credential, we can add this mirror. So I'm going to take care of this one, if that's OK. Once they answer, that should be a quick one. We're just waiting for them. Any question? OK, uh, next one. Packaging job on CI Jenkins IO never completes. So as a consequence of uh, shifting the clusters to Azure, we added some constraints that require some specific parameter on the pod templates. Uh, namely, we need tolerations. Otherwise, no node will accept the pod to be scheduled on the new cluster. So uh, root cause, cluster change on CI, cluster change to Azure, on CI Jenkins IO. Uh, work in progress, pair on the project to unblock the pod allocation. The main reason is because this project used the Docker packaging image, which has a bunch of tools. On long term, uh, we could add them on the all-in-one image, but right now the effort will be huge because that's a lot of tools. Um, so that's why uh, we have uh, decided and uh, discussed as a team to provide an intermediate. Usually, either you have a pod template managed by the developers or a pod template managed by the admin. That's the case of CI Jenkins. For that case, there will be a merge of these definitions. So the developer will be able to override parts of the default definition. We are on the fine tuning of this change and looks uh, promising, so that should be a good thing. Uh, so it should be finished by the end of the milestone. Choice, merge, put template definition between admin defined and developer defined for this particular one. Packaging Docker image instead of all in one. Is there any question on this one? Stefan, does it map to what we discussed yesterday? Sorry, yes, exactly. Cool. So and I learned that that tool to merge that plugin to merge the templates. That's great. In review. Thanks team um, for giving me the permissions on that repository. <laughs> because I didn't have this since it's on the Jenkins CI organization. Uh, oh, we have a third uh, unblocked. OK, so oh yeah, I forgot about this one. OK, so that one is closeable. Closeable as C auto responded. Um, since it's the third one, do you think, folks, it could? I'm not sure if it would be useful to create an issue template saying, "Hey, I've been blocked downloading on Aaron, and here is the contact." But I feel like it might be an issue for the Aaron University. Yeah, you cannot you cannot send directly to Otto without his agreement. Yeah, so and, proposal, and that will that yeah. will lower with the new uh, mirrors too because that will so. spread the load. Hope so. Alternative will be to add a mirror uh, managed by ourselves on Digital Ocean Frankfurt Data Center, which is the same area geographically speaking. 
that could be an alternative to see if we can diminish, decrease the load for them. But yeah, so these are just ideas. Let's not write these ideas and see uh, how much issues uh, uh, we can have. Thanks for the feedback, Stefan. Uh, you, you're right. We don't want to to burn them under welcome. the amount of issues. I mean, they are they are really nice with us. Um, next issue is Packer image. Git version is not always available with the latest CVE on Linux. Particularly, we might have discrepancy between Intel and ARM versions, which fails our builds. That's not the first time. So yes, yeah, Stefan, we decided to get our hands dirty. <laughs> Yeah, Mark is not there, so we can we can talk freely. So we choose <laughs> to compile Git, um, and it went quite well, um, except that uh, we we are stuck in in a little issue that uh, a VM using uh, Ubuntu already got Git um, included as a package, uh, which is a dependency of the Ubuntu server, meaning that we cannot remove it. Um, and uh, that means that we need to make sure that the compiled version is not interfering with the packaging version, or the packaging version is not interfering with the compiling version. And uh, I'm, I have to uh, dig in there and check that the, the compiled script uh, is replacing the, the package version or manually create a package during the build process and install that package. We got two ways of dealing with that. I hope we will be able to do the first one. Version one, let's override the git package I'm, even if- I'm wondering if it's not already that. Partially. We need to exhaustively list the content of the file of the packages and see if we can get them from our compilation or remove them. Yes. Need exhaustive file override and might lead the package tree broken because if a package cannot find their files, it's yes. marked as broken once you do a full analysis with dpkg. In that case, it's acceptable because these are images where we are not expecting to upgrade packages. You want a new package version, you build a new image. So that's fine for that use case. That wouldn't be fine at all for uh, another machine, such as the trusted agent. Are you not funny? Build our own dev package as a post step of compilation. I'm not sure of the complexity of this one. I did I believe... that years ago, but I don't remember. It's the same thing as building the Debian package for Jenkins core that we do every weekly, uh, that we just have to find the recipe for building the package on either Ubuntu or the PPA we are using today. We get the definition and we build the package by ourselves. And then we dpkg-e the package that will replace the existing yeah. git in the case of VM and we are done. As soon as we got the dev file, it's, it's fine. Exactly. So both solutions have to be studied. Um, and also clean up of unused build dependencies at the end. Uh, because we don't want all of the libraries That's still there. there. Yep, exactly. As a reminder, the goal here will be for us to control where does Git come from, compiling it by ourselves, ensure that we have a full uh, we have a full control from source code at a given version as soon as the tag is published, and we control which version we install. Yes, we uh, we need to to remember to update the update CLI manifest at the end to match the correct yep. tag, but we need it to work first. Absolutely. So that one is less prior than the update center. So we have put that one on hold. 
Stefan, given the update center task we have, do you think we can keep this one this week for you as a secondary task if you yes, have some please. time? I want I want to keep that in the in, you know when when I'm so upset by the main task I can switch <laughs> to the other one and get upset by the other one too. So you know, go back and forth. Perfect. Any question on that topic? Nope. Okay. Next one, um, request temporal admin read. So we have Carlos Rodriguez who is going to, to run a, a talk to a CD, CNCF event in Spain. In Spain. And uh, he wanted to have access to CI Jenkins IO to show configuration items. Um, Carlos want to run a, a Jenkins Cloud Fryan Lee talk in June. Um, he wanted to show different CNCF cloud native projects linked to a real life Jenkins instance. CI Jenkins IO being public. I mean, that makes sense. Um, so I met with Carlos and we are going to share links to the public setup we have for a few elements. So on the cloud native elements, the goal is to see cloud native outside the bullshit uh, usual keyword. It's more uh, what kind of API cloud system do we have that Jenkins can interact with? That's what cloud native is, the rest is I mean, unless someone has a better de definition, it's more you have APIs and other APIs and they have to communicate each other. Okay. So the proposal I made to him was to show Azure VM and Azure container based agents, Kubernetes agents, even though we only have one cluster today, but still. Um, what was the way, uh, one last element? former EC2 setup and Datadog setup. So that's the first step. And based on this, if it's enough for him for his talk, we might plan a second meeting where we will, he will ask me to show him configuration. We will record the screen. So instead of giving him access with the risk that could be involved, he would have recording of the configuration and links to the public uh, infrastructure as code to say, hey, look, you can have this. If needed, we'll meet to record my record Damien screen to give him more material. Note with their Jenkins account, you can show build logs with spot template agent definition and other things. So he has, he, he said he has enough material. So it's a matter of sharing the link to the configuration template generator that we use. Is that good for you folks? Is it clear? Do you have question on this one? How will you will you hide the, the security uh, related content from your recording of your video? Oh, uh, you... the, uh, for the agents, you have the main cloud configuration, but you can directly browse to the pod template configuration. And Carlos has worked for years for support, so he really know and I trust him on okay. anonymizing. Good. But yeah, good point. We have to be careful on this one. Um, uh, the next topic, adding uh, GPG signed uh, files on the mirrors because it's present already present on Artifactory. Work in progress by Mark and Basil. I don't know the status, so that's why I'm writing work in progress. I know they did some changes. Now that's due to the packaging job being in error uh, with the pod agent, I was able to put my hand on partially on some elements that could have blocked them. So I hope it will unblock and we'll see. But Mark is off the whole week and Basil is focused on other elements for now. So let's see. 
uh, we will ask them in one or two milestone if they need the help once we will be good enough for the update center. Uh, Stefan, what's the status on storage migration for the controllers? Uh, after a team discussion, we choose to define from disk to uh, PV and PVC, permanent volume, permanent volume claim, the um, the exact step and, and to prepare everything and not let the the system to choose for us. Um, took, uh, took some time, but uh, I managed to have a template of a, a kind of template of a, a storage class that allow us to define the storage kind type directly at the disk level and to have that uh, handle, uh, um, how you call that, uh, that fake storage class with no uh, type to use between the PV and PVC for to make sure that they use the same one. So now we got, um, I'm, I've managed, I've been able to uh, set the, the four objects for weekly PV, PVC, disk, and um, resource group. Uh, so now I have to handle the migration with the template pod that is doing the air sync. And then when the data is okay, switch to the new one. Storage class to ensure PV and PV. Do me. That was the word I was looking for. Static provisioning. Statically provisioned. The. Have the same storage class value. Not null and not default. Yeah, and in to... fact, with no with no storage type, the storage type is is set at the disk level. Plan operation. Oh, I need to. I need to do a do me one. Migration. Preparation involved. Involved. So that's the third. The third task for you, I think. Yeah. Perfect. Is that okay to set the priority of this one between update center and Git? Yes. Perfect. And the next one, nothing done on Damien to send email. Good for you. Okay, so new issues. Do we have new issues? I have one. Maven 3.9.7. So it's uh, it's open on Packer image as soon as we will release and deploy that version that will change the tools and we will need to communicate to developer. Need an issue. Uh, I'm taking it unless you want to take it. Uh, start discussion about uh Jenkins core release with GDK 17 and Maven 3.9.x issue I'll and add mark await same topic remember for this one in a few weeks I think it's in June the weekly release of Jenkins will require GDK 17 but right now we are still building Jenkins using GDK 11. The whole CI process pull request on CI Jenkins IO are using 17 and even 21. So we need to also update the release.ci controller to use these latest versions. That might break or delay some releases, but that will be quickly required because the Spring Security 6 uh, project, I don't remember if it's upgrading to the version 6 or leaving the deprecated version 6. But that's a huge topic and it requires GDK 17 as minimum baseline. And GDK 11 will disappear in October. So we have to update. Do we have new issues in status triage? We don't. That's a good thing. And finally, we will have the token to renew. 
So the two, two one, so four new issues that, that will be full milestone. Um, Hervé, if you're still there, uh, uh, we may need your help to complete the enable to FA on Jenkins and PM account. Are you okay to take this issue given your workload? Do you want to hand it over to us? Okay, cool. I see the, the thumbs up uh, icon. So I assume uh, we can keep Hervé assigned to this task. Um, we have a new private cluster, Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster, and the new sponsored as your subscription. Um, Stefan, do you feel you could start some work, even if it's not a lot, to prepare this for deploying in June? I At can least... try. If it's not too much, because you already have other I issues. have no clue. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really bad to, to foresee the time I will spend. But if I can, I will try. Least priority. And finally, we have the replace blueshan in default display URL, Hervé. I remember you did some tasks and you were successful on some controllers and not on others, right? Yes, as well as it was, uh, I hadn't any time to check what, what was wrong for ci.jenkins.io, but and for uh, CI and really CI are okay, I think. I don't remember if I created a... Cool. Uh... Okay, so it's on CI. Um, that might be a good uh, learning opportunity for me to, or you to, with Jay. So since Jay is currently on the learning process around let's start Jenkins and learn GCASC and stuff, this week it's still a bit too early, but I believe maybe next week, uh, that should be a way for you, for you, Jay, to pair with us. So the model here is we don't expect you to work on the task. The goal for you is to shadow either Hervé or me, and you see the change that we are going to apply here. Um, I defer the final decision to Thursday. Time for you to get started on Jenkins, uh, on Docker, and eventually configuration as code. Is that okay for everyone? So I will... Uh, uh, if the decision is, okay, we need a bit more time to have uh, uh, Jay being feeling good on that topic, because that's the goal. It's not to close the issue, but to have Jay understand what we are doing. So I propose we, I add it on the, I keep it on the milestone. And if we don't have time, or if we need more time, no problem, we defer the issue to one of the upcoming milestones. Okay for you? J as secondary. Is there any other question, folks, on the new issues? Do you have new topics, things you want to discuss? Okay, so then I'm gonna close the meeting. So first, I'm stopping screen share. So I'm going to stop recording. So for people watching us on YouTube, bye-bye and see you next week.